Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another book review. Today we are talking about Mike Bakovin's Fantastic Land. If you see any weird light anomalies, it's because I'm shooting this way early in the morning. Um, I don't normally shoot at this time of day for this reason, but I'm going to be super busy all week. I'm trying to get these videos done before I get into my busyness. Business. Business. Anyways, so uh, Fantastic Land. This comes highly, highly recommended by the horror community uh, on my top horror novels not written by Stephen King list. There's comments uh, recommending this book. There, Every single time I bring up horror novels, uh, modern horror novels, uh, horror novels I didn't like, people point me in the direction of this one. It was the same way with The Last Days of Jack Sparks. Um, I like this one much more than I like The Last Days of Jack Sparks, but it does have its issues, and the issues I have with it are huge spoilers for the story. Unfortunately, every single time the book got good, something happened um, that made me just, it's like, n no, that's, that's not, that's not something that would happen, could happen, or any, any number of things, and it has nothing to do with the actual, like, nuts and bolts of the story itself. In fact, there's one chapter in here that is, that is amazing. It's, it's brilliantly written, it changes the entire course of the story. I think it's chapter 14, I can't remember. If you follow me on Goodreads, or if you read my review over there once I get it written, um, you'll see in the, the notes that I posted, the updates, when that happened. Um, but still, again, I loved that, but it also changed the entire story for me. What I went in expecting was not exactly what I got. Um, now that it is bloody, it is gory, there is, there's great action. Um, the characters are a little one note in places. There are some really great characters that you you feel have their own voice. The way the book is written, it is a series of interviews. Um, some of the interviews aren't quite believable um, because the interview would have hurt their court cases. I believe all of this stuff happens afterwards, so maybe not. Um, well, of course, all of it happens after. Well, all of these interviews happen after the court cases, so maybe not, um, because you can't do uh, double jeopardy, but there there could be civil lawsuits, you know, like O.J. Simpson was uh, convicted of, you know, not killing Nicole and Gold, Goldman, I can't remember who, who he killed, but uh, his, his wife and that dude, uh, but then he lost in civil court, I believe, so I I don't I don't I didn't feel that some of those were were believable that they would go into that much detail, knowing that they could be uh, brought to justice so to speak. I mean they wouldn't go to jail, but they would end up being sued uh, to death. Um, the, I think the main problem I have with this, other than the stuff that we're going to get into in the spoiler section, which will be after the outro, the the main problem I had with this is that all these interviews pretty much sounded the same. You had probably five or six out of, I think, uh, it's well over a dozen people. Let me go through here real quick. Yeah, oh my gosh, there's, there's 23, so there's almost two dozen people in here. And I can only remember the individual personalities of about five people. The leader of the shop girls, um, the, uh, the guy that sounded like he was, uh, basically sounded like he was from the Mafia, uh, the the obviously southern um, who was it the uh, the guy that prosecuted the the kids uh, there's so much there's so many people in here that sound the same um, they especially like the, the there's another shop girl there's an there's an anonymous anonymous one that I thought for sure was the original one um, just anonymous because she talks about you know murdering people. But with that one, it wasn't her because toward the end of that chapter, reasoning's given. I guess that's a bit of a spoiler. But um, so I, I don't feel like the book is as amazing um, as everyone makes it seem to be. It is a good book. It is a fun book. It is a well-written book. 
um, but I, I don't feel that it's amazing. So if you read Mike Bakovin's Fantastic Land, if you have, let me know down there in the comments below. If uh, what you have to say is spoilery, please put a spoiler uh, alert for, well, you know, for this book. Please put spoiler alert at the top of your uh, comment. Uh, if you didn't like it, let me know exactly what you didn't like. If you liked it, let me know exactly what you liked. Again, please spoiler alert if you're going to be talking about spoilers. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been another book review. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye. Okay, so if you're here, if you're still hanging around after the outro, this is where I'm going to be talking about spoilers for Mike Bachman's Fantastic Land. Um, I did like the book, but these are the reasons why I knocked off a star. I almost knocked off another one, but I did enjoy it more than just, you know, more than just being in the middle. I know Goodreads says three, you still, I mean, three, I think, is like it, uh, four is loved it, uh, five is amazing, so I liked it. I'm right there in the middle. I liked it. Um, in, in fact, two might be I liked it. I, I'm not sure. I, I can never remember how Goodreads does it, but I'm right there. I'm I'm right there in the middle, but it bumped me over into the four category, but I don't want to say I loved it. Um, I, I did love certain scenes, and that's what we're going to talk about now, but there is that but. There are problems with these scenes. Okay, so first one we're going to talk about is the utterly asinine fact that the canon at this theme park works. Not only does the canon... A workable canon is, isn't that big of a deal for me. A workable canon that both has gunpowder and cannonballs to be able to shoot and kill people? I gotta call bullshit. Before that, uh, in fact, he even, he, he goes into it, uh, being, being a writer myself, I see these, the, the structural, uh, how things are built, uh, and there's certain times where I'm like, that part right there, he added that part because someone told him, or he realized himself, that this is not going to work unless he makes up an excuse for it. And usually the excuse is that the owner of the park was a stickler for authenticity. There's absolutely no reason for there to be gunpowder in a theme park. None. Whatsoever. Uh, you could have a bag sitting there next to the cannon that says gunpowder, and nobody would tell the difference. Um, it's not like you're going to be shooting off the cannon. And if you are shooting off the cannon, you're definitely not using cannonballs. There's, there's, no, it, there's no reasoning for it. Another thing that they bring up as far as authenticity is concerned is in the pirate section, they have actual jail cells that will lock, and you can lock people away inside of them. That This blew, blew my mind. I, I, don't, I don't understand. Well, I do understand because it's a plot point. I know this is going to annoy some of you. I'm sorry, the sun's moving. Um, but, yeah, the light is bothering me. Uh, the, the, the cannon, the working jail cells that they are able to lock people away in and they can't get out of, all this stuff, there's no way in hell that this company would get insurance. There's no way whatsoever. The only believable, the only believable section as far as like the violence is concerned and the destruction is concerned is maybe he gets away with the C4 toward the end of the book when they destroy the exclamation point. Um, because they are talking about their, they need to do demolition in the park. Um, I still, I'm still on the fence about that one though. Um, them, them needing C4. I just can't imagine being at Disneyland and hearing BOOM, you know, while they're, while they're doing that. And they're not going to do it at night because people around that area, it'll keep people awake. That kind of thing. Um, but, but m most importantly, no working canon. I, I, I couldn't believe that section. Now, the section, af the aftermath of the canon was, was amazing writing. I understand why these choices were made by Bakuman. I understand that, but... I. I can't let, I, I'm too overly critical, and yes, maybe it's nitpicking here, but I'm too overly critical to sit there and go, oh, sure, yeah, a theme park is going to have a working cannon with gunpowder and cannonballs so that somebody can maybe come along and fuck some shit up. It just, it doesn't, it, it doesn't ring true to me, and it ruined that section. Um, there's... There's a part in a hotel room, in a $450 a night hotel room, 
where somebody opens a window and escapes out of the window. I've been in a lot of expensive hotels. A lot of expensive hotels. And I have never once been in one that lets you open up a window. Uh, this is a problem that happens a lot in horror fiction um, because people are always having to escape. And ah, now it's down here. Um, can I scoot? That's a little better. Um, people are always having to escape and people are always climbing out of windows that they shouldn't be able to climb out of. Hospital windows. Or people are jumping out of windows that, or jumping through windows that they can't. It is a storytelling uh, device, but it, it, it's, a, it's a problem. And especially in the horror genre, it's a problem. I don't read too many thrillers. I, I suspect that it'd probably be a, a problem in thrillers. But these are sections of the book that took me completely out of the story. And that's just not something you want in a book. You don't want to be sitting there questioning whether or not something would happen. Whereas with... Uh, I, I'm, I'm only bringing this up. I know I'm a Stephen King fanboy, but I'm only bringing this up because in the Institute, I'm sure that there's some issues there as far as with plot or whatnot, but my, di my disbelief was adequately suspended. I never once thought about how these kids with mind powers were doing what they were doing or rada rada rada, so on and so forth. This is a story that happens in reality. And I question this more than I questioned the speculative fiction aspects of the Institute. This is a good book, though. I'm not going to sit here and say it's not. It is a good book. Um, but I, I don't understand how anyone could go through this and not find those issues. Um, anywho, so the, those, are, those, are the, those are the things that really, really bother me. Unfortunately, there's a lot of stuff like that in this book. Um, and I, I just want to talk about those key elements. Um, there were sections that were entirely believable. Um, especially the uh, the reasoning for why the kids uh, devolved so quickly, why they went crazy so quickly. Uh, the section we're in the spoiler section, so once again, the the bit I think it's I I want to say it's chapter fourteen, but in chapter I'm gonna I, I don't know, but in this certain chapter, the uh, the reasoning for the kids going crazy, them seeing all the stuff at the carnival, the certain well the circus area. Um, going in there, finding the bodies hanging all around, finding all this gore and everything splattered all over the place. Uh, that was fantastic. But then you find out that it's all st stage production, basically. They have used fake bodies, fake blood, fake viscera, all that stuff. And the beginning of that chapter starts with the person involved and the person responsible for it saying, this is probably all my fault. I didn't kill anyone, rada rada rada, but this whole thing is probably my fault. Because what they did to protect themselves by decorating the circus like that is they, they terrified the other tribes, that's what they're called in here, the pirates, the shop girls, so on and so forth. They terrified uh, these people to the point that they felt like they needed to... Uh, the Brock Hockney pirates, that's a whole different thing, but... They terrified this whole, the, all these other tribes, the Deadpools, the shop, shop Girl, all of them, terrified them to the point where they felt like they absolutely had to defend themselves. That, I think that was a brilliant piece of writing, to go, okay, nothing really happened, no one was hurt or maimed or murdered to, to spark all this. What happened is, these were terrified kids who suffered fight or flight. Some of them ran. Um, in fact, the hotel scene's amazing up until he escapes out the window. This is what I'm talking about here. This whole book is full of scenes that are absolutely amazing until the author uses an author device, a storytelling device to try and save himself. And you know, you see it on the page. You're like, this wouldn't happen. He tries to, he tries to say that the, that the hotel window only rolled out a little bit. They don't open it all. Once you, I, I don't know about lower floors, but especially not up on the 18th floor, it, it's, the windows just do not open. I, I want to love this book, but well, here we are, and every single scene that I saw, every single scene that, that, that I saw that was amazing, um, and I know I'm, that by this point I'm just repeating myself, every single amazing scene had a problem with it.